Isn't it mysterious how the Friends showrunners created a show that fans still rewatch hundreds of times? Yeah, Joey just pressed something on the remote and it just came on. More so, the creators even got millennials to fall in love with Friends after nearly three decades since it premiered. How? Perfect cast, genius writing, yes, and no. This show had some other hidden ingredients. All right. No! Joey, we swore we'd never tell! Prepare to hear how the Kaufman Crane duo shaped the Friends characters. And we kind of went, None of this is working. How the main concept of the show was not acceptable, even for the cast. Matt LeBlanc says that he thought the script sucked. And how invisible backstage details actually defined the Friends phenomenon. There are like 150 people waiting for the new version of this. It has to be at the stage at 8.30 in the morning. Ready? Let's go. Do we dare? We dare. Oh. <laughs> the very first special ingredient of Friends that could never be repeated is this duo. Uh, we're, not, we're not the people to ask that. You need to talk to an American culture person. Unlike the famous six, Marta Kaufman and David Crane could easily go unnoticed, walking down the streets of New York. And that's rather weird, knowing that they are basically the parents of one of the most iconic shows that has ever existed. The story of how these two met each other is comedy itself. He was a street urchin. Yes, and Marta was a whore. And, this is true. Uh, well, they were acting in the same play, and those were their roles. Right from their early student years, Marta and David understood that their individual creativity complemented each other perfectly. I don't know. We just we found ourselves finishing each other's sentences really early on, and that's usually a really good sign. That helped a lot on the set of Friends, where David was responsible for the more analytical side, and Marta more dealt with the emotional aspect. But even their perfect match couldn't save them from drama. First, they failed as actors, then as writers of pretty weird musicals. It took them quite a while to enter the world of TV shows, and even then they wrote project after project, none of which were ever picked up for pilots. Basically, the early Friends draft was also something that Marta and David didn't have much hope in, especially of the risky, too general idea of the show. Just think about it. How would you sell a show about uh, a group of people who do nothing? They're just being friends, you know? But it turned out that this was another secret ingredient that we will explore next. What secrets? Oh, no, no, Joey. I'm not gonna tell you because I am an excellent secret keeper. You tell me later. You already know. <laughs> After graduation, David and Marta lived in New York and had a group of six friends. They were all each other's best friends, and they hung out all the time. Of course, this point in their lives inspired the idea for friends. It's about sex, love, relationships, careers, the time in your life when everything's possible. And it's about friendship, because when you're single and in the city, your friends are your family. This was an original treatment pitching, which had a very, very basic concept. I mean, the writers still make fun of us because it's like, oh, when you're in your 20s, you're friends of your family. <laughs> but that's the show. But the genius of the Kaufman Crane duo was that they made something so simple, extremely truthful and relatable. This show is easy to watch anywhere, anytime, and with anyone. It might not have the most intelligent jokes, you know? No! <laughs> But they are damn funny, they're accessible, and they provide a level of comfort. But not everyone was fond of this idea, even the cast themselves. Yeah. Matt LeBlanc says that he thought the script sucked. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> great. And the Warner Brothers executives also thought that the concept needed adapting. But not because it was too simple, more because of its revolutionary approach. You see, before Friends, TV shows mainly promoted nuclear families. All in the family, family matters, family ties, you see a pattern here. When the showrunners wanted to change the formula, the maximum that they were allowed to do was add a twist to the family dynamic, but keep the same format. That's how we met a weird alien who eats cats in the family, or a giant Sasquatch in the Henderson family. But for Marta and David, it wasn't enough. They wanted something different. And so they decided, from now on, you're not defined by your family. You can create a family of your own. But I, I'm okay, really. For the gray, for the gray. 
I've got magic beans. <laughs> in fact, none of the friends are in relationships at the beginning of the show, which was totally crazy for the beginning of the 90s. More so, in the show, friendship often presents itself as something even more important than romantic relationships. You know, boyfriends and girlfriends are gonna come and go, but this is for life. I mean, it's the end of an era! I know! <laughs> It was definitely a breath of fresh air, but still, a different concept alone wasn't enough to make Friends iconic. Another essential aspect of The Great Show, and especially the sitcom, is the humor. And this might come as a shock, but actually, David and Marta aren't the best comedy writers. Uh, we don't really write good jokes. We're, they're much better joke writers than we are. What? Yep, that's true. But that's okay, because we've always been with people who did write really good jokes. Friends needed at least 12 writers in the room to come up with the funny lines. There are 12 of us because the way life works is you're not always on. Today, I might not be at my funniest for whatever reason. But you know what? That was not enough to please the standards of the showrunners. A whole set of executives were ready to jump in whenever a joke didn't show the expected results in front of the live audience. If a joke doesn't work, you just see this whole group of smart people just get in this huddle and then they come out and they tell you a joke. Everyone was involved in the process of reaching the best results. In the behind-the-scenes documentary, this is made clear when Lisa Kudrow suggests asking the audience about a joke from the current scene to clarify whether it's funny or not. If you want to be sure you ask them. You can ask them. Ask the All right. audience. Respond. Who what did not get? Who did not get the fact that uh, that Pete was married to from that joke? When well, she says, oh my god. That at some time in the past she was some married in the past. You guys got yes. They're all, got they got it. Great. Got it. Beautiful. But sometimes there were nights when nothing went as it should. None of this is working. According to producers, there were times when out of 14 scenes, they had seven rewrites right on the set. The quality behind the scenes of Friends was unprecedented. Constant re-editing was also common. I don't love that joke. I feel like it's cheap. Recalling memories decades after the show ended, David and Marta still feel that some storylines could have been done better. Uh, I don't think I've seen it since since it aired. Uh, if I watched it now, there are, would be are there beats I'm where I'd go, change. really? We were okay with that? That was okay? But hey, 10 years of constant laughs is not an easy task. And a big part of the show's success was practically left behind the scenes. Though we might not actively notice the props changing, how the coffee shop posters or the titles on Joey's doors change, or that the fruit is different every day. But actually, it's exactly those little things that made us believe that the central perk and the entire set was real. Monica? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> those were definitely crucial aspects that helped make the show a hit. But we can't avoid the elephant in the room and pretend that the magic between these guys didn't play a huge role in making friends what it is today. As David Schwimmer once shared with Vanity Fair, the miracle is the casting. Having been on the other side of it now in terms of directing and producing, to find one magical actor who was just right for the role is difficult enough, but to find six and then to have them actually have chemistry with each other is just kind of a miracle. These are my friends, These are, this is my family. Besides the natural charisma of the cast, the writers also did an incredible job in making the characters relatable and funny. The show brilliantly uses the core of any good comedy. It relies on the basics of incongruity. This simply means that the more different the characters are, the funnier it is to watch them together. Put Ross and Phoebe in one scene and it's already hilarious. But you don't, uh, you don't believe in evolution? No, not really. <laughs> Give Chandler and Joey a subject to discuss, and you have this. What the hell happened? How are you locked in there? Where the hell's all of our stuff? Well, this guy came by to look at the unit, and, and he said he didn't think it was big enough to fit a grown man. You got in voluntarily? I was trying to make a sale. The Friends writers proved themselves to not only be masters of comedy, but pretty good experts in romance as well. Yes, there's obviously a reason why Ross and Rachel went on a break for so many years, but the real trick is to show the audience everything they wanted about Ross and Rachel while having them separated, and still keep the final intrigue of whether they will or won't be together in the end. Just look, throughout the 10 seasons, they were friends, a romantic couple, enemies in an open relationship, married, living together, they even raised a daughter. We got the full story of their relationship, and yet we all craved to see the moment when Rachel got off the plane. Oh my god, did she get off the plane? Did she get off the plane? That is called good storytelling. 
And this is one of the reasons why millennials watch the show today, nearly 30 years after the premiere. Other than that, Friends also translates an ultimate dream for the younger generations. Recent decades show a fundamental shift in the importance of your 20s and the desire to postpone settling down, getting married, and having kids. Friends portrays this period of 20-something freedom beautifully. And it's not like the show presents this period as carefree and easy. No, we see broken hearts, divorces, failed career plans, and unplanned pregnancies. What Friends teaches us is that we will survive through all of the struggles if we have a bit of a sense of humor and a good friend besides us. Someone who will share our every concern, from sex problems to anxiety about adult life. Phoebe, what? Do you have a plan? I don't even have a plan. <laughs> It's fine to grow up and have a family, or don't, have three divorces or change your career entirely. But most importantly, throughout all these years, the characters of the show became our friends. And that's why when you're having a shitty day, month, or even a year, an episode of Friends still warms up our hearts. That's what makes it truly iconic. If you want to know more secrets about Friends, be sure to check these videos out as well. And thank you for staying awesome!